Hello, father. I... Uh, oh, hello. This valley is vast. We should get to a vantage point if we want to find this expedition. While the triangle of tensions between the Telema, the Bridge Alliance and the natives was indeed a pressing matter, the missing Alliance scientists seemed the most easily resolved and the most urgent. For all she knows, there could be a waiting a rescue right now that might never come. The area the scientists were researching teemed with wild animals and she found a surprise that the scientists would come without a strong escort. But they saw they knew how to backstab. The path led them upwards until they found a number of wrecked tents. Over there, tents. This must be the expedition's camp. This is a rather conspicuous place to set up camp. Ziora was right. These people clearly had no idea about keeping themselves safe in a hostile environment. Signs of combat. They were attacked. By the look of the tents and the campfire, it dates back several days. It seems that they were taken prisoner. I don't see any bodies. No weapon leaves this sort of marking. Perhaps they're wielding magic. Yes. It is the art of the Donegada. One of the Valley Clans was here. Would you know which one? One who fights against the invasion of the peoples from your island. I can be sure of nothing more. Why would they attack scholars? They are not warriors. They come here as conquerors. This is enough. But they were not killed. Warriors would have been. This looks like scientific equipment. This must be the Lost Expedition's campsite. Maybe that explains why the scientists came without a proper guard. They assumed that nobody would attack them. But maybe they should have checked with the natives to see if they agreed. This looks like the journal of a naturalist. There are sketches of flora and fauna. There is no doubt, we are definitely on the trail of the lost expedition. It seems that one of the team kept a distance from the others. Let's see what we can discover. A trail of blood. That cannot be good. Follow it. More blood. We are on the right path. Keep going. The trail of blood might have drawn that pack, but it doesn't seem that it was caused by the pack. If there was some bleeding, then there was no time to waste with this pack. We found the body the blood came from. A corpse. The clothes cannot be mistaken. It is a scholar of the Bridge Alliance. From the looks of him, I would say he has been dead for days, as we already thought. This isn't the woman whose journal we found. There is still a chance that she remains alive. This man traded his life for all the suffering of my people. He was only a scholar, a sage, not a warrior on the battlefield. Do you think my people see a difference when bridgemen steal our people from their beds? From who do you think? All the clans hide dead children. I lean towards Siora's point of view. The practices of these scholars, so-called seekers of knowledge, are barbaric. Teleme would offer you protection and support. In exchange for our souls. I think we would prefer to go to war. I'll search the body. We might find something to help us understand. And it seems to have a key to a chest we've not come across. There's clearly something we haven't found. A bit further on, there's a much better disguise than more defensible camp. Here is the isolated camp mentioned in the journal. Everything is in order, but the inhabitants are no longer here. 
Its position would have allowed them to escape the attack. The view over the valley is magnificent, and makes it difficult for an enemy to approach without being seen. Yes, this was someone who'd been in a campaign or two. The key we found on the scientist's body opens the chest. She understood that they went alone almost immediately. It is a journal, that of a woman from the expedition, a certain Afra. She speaks of their research and relates here that she felt watched. She feared an attack was brewing. I believe she was right. The writing stops in mid-sentence. These people of the bridge have either just hatched from eggs or are complete idiots. My people are at war. They do not spare an enemy under pretext that they are not wearing the clothing of soldiers. We must follow the tracks of the attack. They will surely lead us to the party of intrepid scholars. This woman was right to fear the Donea Eggs Regal. They must have followed this path coming from the swamp. This is where we should go if we want to find these lion scholars. Look, those are islanders. They might be from the clan that attacked the Bridger camp. That's possible. They look like trackers. But what are they tracking? New prey, no doubt. Let's get closer. The Sade might be looking for the scientists, but she had no wish or need to exacerbate relations with the natives. The Alliance's war with the natives was not her affair. Maybe they were distracted or focused on their prey, but the Sade managed to sneak right up to them and tap them on the shoulder. Renaise! We won't let you take us. We will not kneel down without a fight. We have no wish to fight you. Siora? Sorry. I am not going to help save people who capture our people and attack them. You will get nothing from us, Renaise. We are ready to return to the Earth. In that case... Siora wouldn't help us. Is that because she's so bound by hatred for their lives that she'd see her own people killed? Or was it because she didn't trust her Sade? Either way, the Sade would sort things out herself peacefully. Wait, we have no desire to fight you. We only want to find the Lion Sages. They are not warriors, but their chief is ready to send an army of warriors to liberate them. If you help us bring them back, you will save your tribe from a costly battle in lives. He speaks truly. Look, one of them is already eager to bring Lion Warriors back to us. All we wanted was for them to tell us where our brothers are being kept. What good is this if we must leave our camp behind? Very well. Stay away from the main entrance. Our guards will not welcome your arrival. Pass around. There is a smaller entrance hidden there. The lions are kept in a home in ruins. There must be a key somewhere to open the door, but I know not where it is kept. They just vanished into thin air. But it seems the attack on the scientists was retaliation for the Alliance kidnapping some natives. The fact that they were willing to talk and not fight with the Sade showed her that they were most likely sincere. to kill you. Tell me then, what is your intended purpose? We were sent to look for you. Apologies, but allow me to express my doubts. After this little swim, you could always try to pull the trigger. Who sent you to find me? We were not looking for you in particular, but the entire expedition. It was Governor Burham who asked us to find you. He is worried about you. You haven't been reporting. You should have said that straight away. I must admit, I was hoping for a rescue of a different nature. Do you have a name? De Sarde. I'm from the congregation. Hmm, the new governor's cousin. Who wears an islander face. I've heard stories about you. And then? 
I am Siora, daughter of Bladnid. From the people that your own capture and torture. I've never taken anyone. On the contrary, we had hoped to exchange our knowledge with your own. Bishop Petrus, if our young friend hadn't insisted on coming here, I would have gladly let you rot in this marsh. Behold the charity of the enlightened, huh? This is a rather odd group. I am Afra, a scholar from the Bridge Alliance. It is rather rare to find me rolling in the marshes. I study the fauna and flora of this isle. I should imagine you have many questions. We saw the site where you were attacked. What exactly happened? We were taken by surprise. One moment everything was calm, and the next a war party of natives fell upon us. I had an uneasy feeling and kept myself apart, but when I heard my fellow scholars' shouts, I rushed over. Most of my companions are incapable of defending themselves, and we didn't have guards to protect us. One of them tried to flee, but they brought him down. We decided to give ourselves up to avoid a massacre. What has happened since the attack? How long have you been in these marshes? We were taken prisoner and were brought to a village nearby. I was able to escape while the others were taken to a house that they use as a prison. I wanted to join the Bridge Alliance frontier post not far from here, but I wasn't able. So I doubled back to keep watch of the village from a distance. I have been hoping to find a way to free my companions without any success so far. Have you made progress in your search for a cure? Hmm. We were studying some quite remarkable plants when we were attacked. The region is rife in unknown and novel species. Some seem incredibly promising. The local shamans know all these plants and they use them in their remedies. If only we had been able to converse with them rather than getting ourselves captured. Could you lead us to the village where your colleagues are being held prisoner? Certainly. We are, oh, so very close, and I fully intend to participate in this rescue. I'm not one to sit around and twiddle thumbs. Afro led the team through a cave system to a high ledge and onto a hidden valley. This is where the natives took your colleagues? Yes, it is here. These ruins are being used as a camp by the native raiders. There are so many of them. Better to remain discreet. I have spied on the camp and discovered where my colleagues are being held. They are being kept in the old walls of the main ruin. I would rather avoid unwarranted deaths. We should wait until nightfall and look around the camp to find a more discreet way to get inside. Decided I agree with the idea. And once darkness arrived, they set off for the camp. The scouts had mentioned a back entrance. And scouting the perimeter brought them to a set of stairs leading above the buildings and the walls. I fled as they were about to lock my companions inside a cell. We're going to need a key. Please, on all Manawi, let's try to avoid a fight. This ruin spoke of a large town. From what you'd seen, the natives did not build large stone and brick structures like this. From the look of them, the ruins were decades, if not centuries old. Where had they come from? This section was particularly well patrolled. This must be the part of the ruins the natives were using. But careful observation by the Sade showed a time when the patrols were not in sight of each other and left a gap for them to pass through. Prisoners were being held in the upper ruins, past the staircase. Nearly caught by that sentry. Luckily there's only one, and we can just get past him by going around him and using the ruined walls as cover. Strangely, the keep was in a stash nearby, and completely unguarded. The natives must have assumed that nobody would get past their patrols, but their side day was more wily than the average continental. Which was pretty lucky, because their side day could barely pick her own nose unaided, let alone a lock. Afra, is that you? Come quickly, we don't have much time. Thank you for your help. Do not thank me yet. 
We are still in a shipload of danger. Lady Luck must help those that are dumb, because these idiots have gone right past the guard, completely unspotted. Or maybe the guard was just blind. But whether lucky or blind, there was breaking. And if they dallied too much longer, stealth would go out the window. The guard saw something out of the corner of their eyes, but it was gone before it registered in their consciousness. After that, it was just a matter of retracing their steps. But a surprise awaited them. It seems that the natives had noticed that the prisoners were missing. The Sada imagined that a haze potion might allow her to go past them. But unfortunately, a confrontation was unavoidable. Mercy, you have defeated us. Spare us our lives. If you spare them, they will only hunt us down until we are all dead. No, you have our word. We have been bested. We will let you move on in peace. How can we trust you? You attacked our camp when we were not even armed. They are savages. They had us caged like beasts. We only sought to learn where you have caged our people. Spare their lives. I beg you. They were only fighting to save the lives of those that have disappeared. Very well. Leave, and I hope you keep your word. Thank you, Onol Manawi. I have spoken, and I will honor my words, Kwa Awalamseg. Ziora seemed to take note of the mercy. The Sade's estimation had gone up in Ziora's eyes. It also seems, given the unfamiliarity with the word caging, that the natives do not generally use jails. We are no longer in danger. Thank you for your help, Dasade. I must admit, the reasons for my being here are not entirely selfless. Your research to find a remedy against the Malakor could save many lives in our cities as well. You speak like a true woman of science. Cut to the point. Then you'll be thrilled. Your heroic efforts to save us from those savages could help. We've made a discovery. Is that right? In that case, we need to speak with Governor Burham immediately. Lady de Sade, and our expedition. I thank you sincerely for having brought them back, Your Excellency. You are a providential woman. <laughs> Please, sir. It was you who convinced me and my cousin of the capital importance of their research. A research that has borne fruit, Your Excellency. Truly? This is excellent news. You have found a plant with sufficient properties? Uh, not exactly. Know that during our captivity, an island woman visited the camp. The natives called her Tiena Hak Kadactus and treated her with utmost reverence. I heard them talk about a remedy, a universal remedy it seemed, that she had concocted. How's that? Liamatra did nice them? Huh. Well, I grasped the basic of the local tongue and I am certain to have heard the word yag. Remedy. Surprising. But the Tiernahach is very powerful and very wise. It is possible that she did craft such a remedy. Desade, can I do anything for you? Do you often hold strangers at gunpoint? Only when I'm being tracked. What about you? Do you often track young ladies? Your journal was surprisingly thorough, and your observations very pertinent. How could one not want to find someone so brilliant? Your compliment goes straight to my heart, I mean it. But I regret to inform you that your friendship appeals to me more than your appearance. Where do you come from, Afra? From Alima near Al Saad. It is but a small town, but there is a particularly renowned observatory there. My parents wanted me to become an astronomer, but I chose the Earth over the sky. 
I was always more intrigued by life rather than distant stars. Plants and animals fascinated me as a child. For this reason, I left Alima quite early to study in the capital, and I seldom returned. When did you arrive on the island? A little more than two years ago. My master, Dr. Rassili, suggested that I should follow him to Tirfredi. He needed help cataloguing all the unknown plants and animals. How could I decline such an offer? There's so much to discover here. Do you miss the continent? Your city? Your family, perhaps? No. When I arrived on this island, I immediately knew that it was where I was supposed to be. Your Excellency, can you tell me anything about Afra? Don't mind me. I'll just count the shadows. There now, my dear. You know that I have nothing but praise for you. Afra is one of our greatest naturalists. Her knowledge is infinitely precious to us, and we are happy that she is among your party. Unfortunately, their native high priestess was in a well-guarded place, and it would be impossible to get to her at this stage. The side they had found that the time required to set up traps could be deadly. It was important to design them to be easier to set. And once again, her gun skills take priority. Bishop Petrus had a personal request to make of her, and if their side had learned anything, it was that getting her companions on side, especially those who might have been assigned to spy on her, was imperative. Ah, oh, my child, I'm happy that you are here. I've had an idea that I wish to present to you. Please do. I've known the Mother Cardinal for quite some time. She is a formidable woman, gifted and diplomatically skilled. I fear that your cousin might be a little defenseless when dealing with her and would like to give him a few weapons. What do you have in mind? Diplomacy is not only a matter of formal encounters and choreographed etiquette. If we had the means to action more personal leverage, the Mother Cardinal could not manipulate your cousin. How could we ever find anything of that sort? Everyone has nasty little secrets, my child. It's our task to discover Cornelia's. Very well. Let's go and discover what the governor would rather keep hidden from the world. Excellent. How would you like to go about this? We must search her apartments in St. Matthias. They'll be guarded, of course. But if we are discreet, that shouldn't be a problem. This is taking quite a risk. The congregation's reputation could suffer if we're caught, and my cousin's position would be weakened. I know, but keep in mind that I know the palace extremely well. And if we want to be sure to pass without being noticed, we need only dress ourselves up as servants. That would improve our chances. Well, let's do it. The old warhorse was quite cunning. He made sure to frame spying on the Mother Cardinal, an act that might spark a diplomatic crisis, as helping to keep our cousin from being influenced. Petros wouldn't also gain advantage over the Mother Cardinal. Not at all, of course. But it wasn't wrong that we would also gain, so why not? Ah, Your Excellency. The Enlightened must have sent you. I would like to ask a favor of you. I'm listening. As you may be aware, we suspected this island might be the one St. Lucius wrote about. Is that so? We did, but let me explain. This island was where St. Matthias lived at the end of his life, and where he founded a perfect community. Some time ago, we created a village which we called Eden, following his example. We chose this place as it seemed to be the closest to the one described in the Holy Scriptures. It is a home to a community of converted islanders, accompanied and guided in their budding faith by our theologians. As you can imagine, it is of the utmost importance to us, all the more so because we discovered some tablets there which were engraved by our founder. An extraordinary discovery that confirms your suspicions. I see you understand. Alas, these tablets were stolen, probably by the islanders who still reject our influence. I know that you are generally well accepted by the natives. That is why I was hoping that you could help us to retrieve what belongs to us. I suppose I could go to Eden and try to retrieve them. Marvelous. The leader of the community, Father Eustinius, will be able to answer your questions. May the Enlightened assist you in this holy quest, Your Excellency. Somehow nobody cares when Desa Day walks right past the Mother Cardinal. 
the head of the Inquisition and countless guards on our way into the Mother Cardinal's inner chambers. Maybe they assumed that Eden and the tablets were that way. A letter in the inner chambers spoke of a special room in the basement, along with replacing carpets due to heavy staining. That speaks of either a very good or a very bad time. Either scenario promises to be something the Mother Cardinal might not want brought to light. The key the message spoke of are in the Mother Cardinal's offices on the opposite side of her audience chamber. This area of the palace is forbidden to visitors by order of the Mother Cardinal. We did not know. Please, excuse us. The basements are for servants only. A bit of stealth allows the Sade to sneak past the servants. Though purchasing some comfortable vests would also allow the Sade to pass unimpeded. But style must reign over comfort for someone like their Sade. Ah, well. This is a very unique place. The smell of stupor and vice reign as its masters. You're not wrong. We should search this place. Bishop Petrus's voice is positively dripping with expectation. It can smell not just debauchery and pleasure, but advantage. Oh, for goodness sake. This room reeks of alcohol. And not just any old alcohol, if my nose does not deceive me. Cornelia always had great taste when it came to drinking. And how would you know that, Bishop? Did you drink with her, perhaps? It seems that someone forgot their earring. Oh, here is an object of more than questionable taste. A woman from a good family would never wear it. It's junk. The kind of thing a courtesan would wear. I didn't know you were an expert on the subject, Father. The subject of jewellery? No, of courtesans. We are here at the heart of human depravity. Outrageous luxury, excessively priced alcohol, obvious debauchery. Surely this is enough to incriminate the Mother Cardinal. No, my child. These things are common in certain circles, even in Teleme, unfortunately. Cornelia may well have organized these things for others. These parties might be of use in gaining some political favor. We must find out who is involved and learn more. The earring that we found may help us with that. We could ask at the brothel if it belongs to a prostitute. We should continue searching. Perhaps we missed something. It seems that the shadows are deepest, but the light is brightest. For all the talk of enlightenment and piety, Teleme has a very dark underside. This must be the Mother Cardinal's private office. And within it, we find a very interesting book of secret accounts. Candy Cane sounds like a nickname a shady figure might use. This document is highly important. By reading it carefully, you could learn a lot. The Mother Cardinal apparently borrows large amounts of money from a moneylender. Actually, enormous sums. What's more, she does so quite regularly. How does she manage to give it all back? Hmm. And the name Candy Cane crops up several times. Quite suspicious, don't you think? This sweet person must be doing her huge favors to get these sums. I think we have everything we need. There is probably a connection between these pleasure parties and the account books. Let's ask a few questions. The moneylender is well established. He can be found near the main square. As for this candy cane, the name doesn't ring any bells to me, but the moneylender must know more about him. We can also go and gather information at the coin tavern. Perhaps the manager knows him. Desade makes an undetected exit and heads off to the tavern. ZD Business always traces its way to drinking and gambling establishments. You sometimes deliver goods to your big clients. Isn't that right? Of course. The rich don't like to get drunk among mere mortals. And have you ever supplied anyone from the palace? Yes, that has happened. It suits them. And who places these orders? Well, a steward, of course. Don't you know how things work? A woman? 
dressed in a long green cloak? No, the steward is more discreet. On the other hand, the person in the big green coat, the steward speaks to her sometimes. They know each other or work together. What can you tell me about a certain candy cane? Candy cane? Everyone speaks about him or has heard of him, but no one really knows him. And what do they say about him? Here, nothing. You need to go downstairs for that sort of thing. To the games room and the brothel? Yes, that's more the kind of place where they'd talk about him. I am looking for a woman who comes here. She always wears a long green coat. Yes, I have seen this coat before. But I have no idea who is beneath it, if that's what you're asking. All I know is that I've seen her speaking to a regular, a steward of the palace who comes to place big orders. Always prime choice. Do you think that the Mother Cardinal may have been here? <laughs> Are you drunk or something? Good day. Welcome. You here to wager? To fight? I imagine that the name Candy Cane rings a bell. Obviously. Even though I would prefer it wasn't the case. He's a sort of... organizer. He captures most of the beasts who fight in the arena. How is that a problem? Apparently, he's fixed a few fights. These kind of rumors aren't good for my business. If that's the case, why don't you stop him? He has friends, protectors. Without solid evidence, no one will lift a finger. And the only ones who wanted to speak of his cartel have disappeared. Do you know where I could find him? He often hangs out around the port at night, but I strongly advise you to stay away from the guy. I know how to look after myself. Thanks for the information. Has the Mother Cardinal ever come here to place bets? <laughs> the Mother Cardinal? And why not Saint Matthias himself while you're at it? Saint Matthias supposedly lived on the island, so you never know, bookmaker. It's interesting that nobody recognizes the Mother Cardinal, but there's a green cloaked figure that appears often and gives orders to the palace steward. A feast for the eyes, ladies and gentlemen, and it's free. Come and see me as soon as you have made your choice. You won't be disappointed, of that I can assure you. Come on. So, have you found what you were looking for? Let's just say that I'm gathering information. My treasures are worth their price. I promise you that you will get your money's worth. For you? I'm sure we can make a special arrangement. Father, do you want to explain to this man why we are here? Of course. We are not here for your services, but to lead an investigation. Several clients of yours have made a complaint. Precious objects disappearing after your employees' visits. People in very high places are concerned, which explains why we've been asked to take care of it. This cannot be. I... Well, listen. Come in, but please be discreet. Thank you for your cooperation. Look, a new face. Oh, but wouldn't that be... Hello, Father. I... Uh, oh, hello. Hmm. We would like to know if you know who this earring belongs to. Is it maybe yours? Absolutely not. I am careful not to leave my belongings with clients, and I have no desire to answer your questions. That doesn't fall within my services. Very well. Goodbye. Well, 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 Father Petrus. Have you too been trying to bring these lost lambs to the light? There are too many of you for me alone, my little lambs. Sorry, madam. But we are here to ask other favours of you. This question might seem a little surprising. But do you know who this earring might belong to? Why? It's mine. I, I lost it when... How did you get hold of it? Are you sure you want to broach that subject here? You're right. Come with me. Well, what do you want? Why are you giving me back my earring? You know where we found it, don't you? Obviously! I realized as soon as I got back that I'd lost it. I imagine your pimp does not know that you take part in these parties. He doesn't dabble in this at all. No, do not say anything to him, I beg you. He's on my case enough as it is. 
Then I suggest you answer my questions. <sighs> what would you like to know? Could you tell us who you saw at the parties? Rich people, or better. They seemed very rich and important to me. But I don't know them. Do you know who organises these parties? Not really, no. A steward pays me when I go, but I don't see anyone else, apart from the clients. You can't even give me a single name? No. The only person who sometimes speaks to this steward is a woman who is always wearing a green coat. She never takes part in the festivities, but the steward rushes over whenever she arrives. Do you think that an important person from Teleme could have partaken in these soirees? You're thinking of Mother Cardinal, aren't you? You lot really think we are a bunch of degenerates. You're hardly a shining example of virtue, my child. Just answer our questions. Sorry, Father, I don't know the Mother Cardinal, but I strongly doubt she dabbles in that. You don't think you could recognize her, and you don't think you've crossed paths. <sighs> what a testimony. This woman in the green coat. Could you tell me about her? She always hides her face and never joins us. Then she disappears into a little office and locks the door. I see. She is quite important, then. Do you know someone who goes by the name of Candy Cane? Everyone does. He is a powerful person, so his name makes the rounds. Have you ever spotted him at these... pleasure parties? In all honesty, I wouldn't even be able to recognize him. I've heard his name before, but that's all. Admit it. You must know more than you're letting on. It's virtually impossible not to recognize someone while being so close to these influential people. Wouldn't you agree? Well, I was able to recognize someone, once. Even with a mask on, I'm good at recognizing my clients. Please continue. I'm all ears. I don't want to implicate anyone, but he is of no real importance. And you've probably never even heard of him. It's the local moneylender. I know very well who you're referring to, my dear. But I didn't mention anything to you, huh? This stays between us. I don't even remember the subject of this conversation anymore. Thank you for your help. Be sure not to mention this to anyone. I'd lose my clients if they suspected me of speaking about them, you know. The green cloaked figure is most certainly the Mother Cardinal. Greetings! May the word of Saint Matthias guide you. Indeed, good sir. May the light guide you in this brothel. I am looking for someone. A woman wearing a big green coat. Yeah, I know who you mean. She's a good client. She comes in, especially for the big fights, and she has prime information. Do you know where I can find her? No, I don't even know her name. She wouldn't happen to be coming back to collect some winnings, would she? No, and I can't really tell you when she'll show up next. I am looking for a woman who comes here. She always wears a long green coat. Yes, I have seen this coat before, but I have no idea who is beneath it, if that's what you're asking. All I know is that I've seen her speaking to a regular, a steward of the palace who comes to place big orders. Always prime choice. It seems that the mother cardinal is very involved in placing large bets. What is the purpose, however? Is she involved in fixing games to make money? Have a nice day, madam. What is she spending that money on? So is it simply that she enjoys betting? Or is there something more nefarious that she's using the money for? Can I help you? Yes, actually. I have a small favour to ask. You don't look like you need money from me. I'll get straight to the point. I have bad news for you. I know about the... decadent parties at the palace. I know that you take part in them. What? But... <coughs> what are you talking about? Stop acting all innocent. I have all the evidence I need to incriminate you. Although your reputation isn't spotless, there are others who have a lot more at stake than you. What if I were to spread it around town that you boast about being there? You know what happens when tongues wag too much. That's enough! All right, all right, I'll get the message. What do you want? Tell me about Candy Cane. We're not close, if that's what you want to know. I just know his name, like everyone else. 
I mean, there are some rumours. They say he does his business in the basement of the Coin Tavern. What kind of business? Oh, nothing to do with my line of business. He deals in arena fights, which are beyond me. It would appear that you know the Mother Cardinal very well. I know that she borrowed money from you. I even know how much. What I want to know is why. <laughs> I have no idea. Do you really think that my clients tell me everything about their lives? Does she still owe you money? No, she always pays me back on time and with interest. Do you think she is plundering the city funds? Ha! <laughs> if that were the case, the funds would have been depleted long ago. Nah, the money's coming from elsewhere. I would advise you to keep all of this to yourself. <laughs> I, I don't want any trouble. I will be as silent as a stone. So, how do you see things, my child? I think that the usurer is lending money to the Cardinal, and very significant sums at that. With this money, she bets on the arena fights while hiding in a big green coat. And she also gives large amounts to a certain candy cane, known for fixing fights. Not only does our dear Cornelia love betting games, but she also wouldn't think twice about cheating to win. Maybe he is just giving her advice. How can we prove anything? We can always try asking him. Who knows? Perhaps he will give us an answer. Good evening. Are you the one they call Candy Cane? Who are you? De Sardé. Legate of the Merchant Congregation. A legate, no less. I imagine in these cases, the one accompanying you is the famous Petrus. You seem to be very well informed. Therefore, you might be able to answer my question. What do you know about a woman in a green coat? Why would I tell you? We know that you have business with this woman. And that she is actually the Mother Cardinal. How did you... You would be better off forgetting that. That's not exactly the response I'd imagined. But nevertheless, seems rather eloquent. I told you to forget about it, or you'll soon run into trouble. Legget or no legget. Come on. It was just an innocent little conversation. Goodbye, Mr. Kane. Bye. And Godspeed. We have enough information. Really? Is the fact that she bets on fights that are potentially fixed enough for you? It's already a huge scandal. Let me just think about it for a little while. I will find a way of putting this information to good use. I have faith in you, Father. Desade reminds herself that she needs to get on Bishop Petrus's good side. She wouldn't want to have him dig into her or her cousin's affairs. But Candy Kane is a coin guard. Since when is a coin guard involved in fixing arena fights? He's already linked to Egon and the silver coin that was shaking down merchants in New Serene. While we await the results of the investigation, it's time to see to Siora's request for mediation between her tribe and the Alliance. The Sade had already delayed too long, and Siora had made her displeasure known by refusing to help us speak to the trackers while they were searching for the scientists. There were quite a few bandits roaming around here. This note speaks of a watchful peace, with both sides wary of each other. No wonder tensions with the natives were high when there were so many brigands flooding the region.
Level 11 allows Jasade to improve her traps to better break armor. That's a key requirement for someone without heavy weapons. But after much wandering, the village came into sight. This is where the spears of all past warriors are gathered. The branches are reclaimed by the tree and bring strength to the village. Who do you think you are? By what right do you enter the home of our queen? I am the emissary of the Congregation of Merchants. I have come to meet your leader. Come now, Arwant. You are not a watchdog. Where is my mother? Siora, I didn't see you. You have come too late. Your mother has gone to wage a war. They left for Didekid Nadageis only a few hours ago. Oh no. We must catch them. And please, if you want to avoid bloodshed, it would be better that she doesn't come along. And why? Might I assume you have it in your mind to fight? Your answer proves my words. Very well. Let's be off. In order to go toward the Degid Nadagis, we must follow the path leading toward the heights and to the forest. The Sade wonders whether her delay is at fault for the Queen's decision to fight. Would the outcome have been different if she rushed over immediately? Wait. We should go left here. It's a more difficult path, but it's much shorter. Look at the tracks. They chose to take the path on the right, it would seem. Before a battle, it makes sense that they wanted to avoid a path with more danger. If it is dangerous, let's not risk braving it when time is against us. We risk meeting a great many beasts. But if we follow the warriors, we risk catching up with them too late to sway them. That question was on her mind as she rushed on the faster but more dangerous left path. Thanks for listening to me. I fear my mother may have already thrown herself into the battle. As the had mentioned, this was a dangerous path and combat with packs of beasts was unavoidable.
the battle was commenced already. The time for discussion was over, and all that Sade could do was rescue Ziora's sister from slaughter. You are too late, Siora. Mother has fallen and we are defeated. No, no, no. This is not fair. I am so sorry. Who is this woman? She resembles one of us, but is dressed like a Renaigzi. I am the ambassador of the Congregation of Merchants. I am sorry for your loss. She dares say all this while standing beside a murderer. One of those who steals away from our very own. I have never taken anyone. I am sorry for your mother, but this battle was folly. You speak like your gods are older than ours. No, you won't. You want to arrest me? You will be the first to pay for these deaths. Bringing Afro was clearly a mistake, and as Ciora had warned, it led to a needless fight. Bringing Bishop Petrus might show your sister that their side was at least not openly on the side of the Bridge Alliance, even if she wasn't yet an ally of hers. I am sorry for your loss. The congregation? And what side are you on in this war? Those that massacre our people? Essel, calm down. You know that Mother sent me to seek out allies. You show up when the fight was nearly over. Was this part of your plan? You know that these monsters are taking our own. They must make honorable amends. The congregation is neutral. We hoped to stop this battle. Stop this battle? You are mad or a dreamer. This battle was destined. Our folk disappear one soul after the other since you arrived. We are not going to let this happen. We got here as fast as we could, I assure you. And we have fought by your side. Listen, after a battle, whether lost or won, the Elders say that we must return the dead to the Earth. And tend to the wounded. She is right, Iselt. This is no time to continue the fight. Truly spoken. You are right, and you know our traditions. I feel weak. You need to return to the village and care for your wounds. We will watch over the others. Thank you. I'll see you again, Siora. Thank you for soothing her anger. We must tend to the wounded now. And find my mother. Or her body, if... If she is indeed dead. Look at this massacre. How? Find her banner. It bears the symbol of our clan. These ruins are very strange. By what name did you call this place again? The Dida Kitten Nadai Gaze. There was once a battle in the past. A great victory for our clans. Strange indeed. These walls are completely foreign to the styles of your own dwellings. Does this name that you gave the ruins mean anything in particular? Yes. 
It means ruins of the first guardian. I would like to dig around a little on the site. We might be able to unearth clues as to who actually built them. Over there, I think that man is still breathing. Let's make sure. You now have enough strength to return to the village. Find Arwant. He will take care of you. These walls are reminiscent of those ruins where the Alliance scientists have been taken. These so-called First Guardians did not seem to have been natives, and Siora spoke of her people defeating them. But right now there are wounded strewn around the battlefield that need to be taken care of. Pity, I, I beg of you. I, I just want to die. Then answer! Siora! Stop! Look at yourself. You're acting like a beast. A beast has far more majesty than these monsters who have traded their souls. They have taken her. The Queen. They took her. Then she must still be alive. They wouldn't have bothered to carry away a corpse. She would have chosen death before capture. They must have wanted her alive. We must find her. If your mother is in the hands of the bridge, they'd have taken her to their closest camp. Promise me that we will do everything we can to bring her back. Her good relations with the Bridge Alliance, especially given how she saved the scientific expedition, may allow her to sway the governor to release the Queen. But peace would not come as long as the Queen was captive. That much was certain. Another warrior who survived. I do not think that we will find any more of them now. We healed them all, thanks to you. May the grass always be soft beneath your feet. Wild beasts roam the vicinity of the ruins. Maybe hoping for a free meal that the battle had provided. But it seems that their Sade wasn't the only continental to have come to these ruins. The professor that Sir de Cousillon had asked her to find had left some correspondence behind. It seems that the sea monsters are susceptible to poisons, while those from the swamps might be immune. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments. Feel free to leave a like, subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified when new videos come out. See you soon.